Okay, guys, this is uh, English 1. Um, we're going over documents C and D. Um, let's look at that. So, document C, I'll thy, I'll thy assistant be. Okay, so you're going to read that and answer the, the document analysis questions. So, I'm going to open this up so it's a little bit easier to see. It says, um, Friar Lawrence said, But come, young waver, come, go with me. In one respect, I'll thy assist be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Moments before Juliet arrives to marry Romeo, Friar Lawrence speaks to Romeo about the marriage. Friar Lawrence, so smile the heavens upon this holy act. These violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die, like fire and powder, which as they kiss, consume. So, now married to Romeo, Juliet asks Friar Lawrence, Friar Lawrence to help her avoid marrying Paris referred to here as this county. The remedy referred to in the last line in Friar Lawrence's plan for Juliet to, to fake her own death. Friar Lawrence, ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next, be married to this county. Tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. God, join my heart in Romeo's thou art hands. Friar Lawrence says, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Okay. So in 2.3, Act 2, Scene 3, Friar Lawrence calls Romeo a waverer. What does it mean to waver? What does this suggest about Friar Lawrence's belief in Romeo's love for Juliet? Number two says, What reason does Friar Lawrence give for being Romeo's assistant in his pursuit of Juliet? Number three, What holy act is Friar Lawrence referring to? He also says, These violent delights have violent ends. What could he be predicting? Okay, so a waverer is someone who flips and flops and changes their mind. So Romeo is a waverer in such that he was so in love with Rosalind and immediately soon after he was in love with Juliet. Okay. So Fire Lawrence is not a hundred percent sure of Romeo um and how he feels. If it's going to be um for a short period of time, or is he going to change his mind again? Okay, what reason does Friar Lawrence give for being Romeo's assistant in his per pursuit of Juliet? So, because the Capulets of the Montagues um, are a feuding family, uh, Friar Lawrence thinks that maybe the marriage of Romeo and Juliet could bring the two families together. Um, what holy act is he referring to? The wedding of um, or marriage of Juliet and Romeo? And then he says, uh, these violent delights have violent ends. What could he be predicting? Well, violent sometimes is, um, means to rush something or very, um, serious decisions like weddings and marriage. So what he's saying is this may not turn out well. So it could be predicting. What could he be predicting? Um, which he wouldn't have known, but he could be predicting that, Romeo and Juliet would end up dying, so that's not good. Okay, document analysis. In Act uh, 4, Scene 1, why does Juliet think Friar Lawrence should prevent her marriage to Paris? Um, well, Friar Lawrence married Juliet to Romeo, so, and he approved of it, so he should um, step up and help her with that. Um, when Friar Lawrence says, I'll give thee remedy, what does he mean? So, I'll give thee remedy. I'll give you a solution, okay? I'll give you a solution to your problem. And in this case, it's the sleeping potion, right? Six, how might this document be used to answer the question, who's to blame? So, in this one, you would have evidence that Friar Lawrence had to do, or had blame in this situation. So, that would be going into, if you had labeled one of your buckets, Friar Lawrence, or, or you're going to, 
you could you have a lot of evidence that Friar Lawrence is to to blame because he's like uh, got he married these two kids. Um, he's keeping a lot of secrets. He gets her sleeping potion. Um, so a lot of things don't end up well because of bad decisions made by Friar Lawrence. Okay, so now we have document D, disobedient wretch. Okay, so it says, what are the joyful tidings that Lady Capulet brings to Juliet? Is there evidence here that Capulet's attitude about Juliet's marriage to Paris has changed? Explain. When Capulet says, my fingers itch, what does he mean? And for how could this document be used to place blame on the Capulets or on Lady Capulet? Okay, so let's see if I can make this a little bigger here. Okay. Early in the play, Juliet's father, Capulet, is responding to Paris's request to marry Juliet. He says, but woo her gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. So he will allow it, but... It's up to her, okay? Um, after their only night together as a married couple, Romeo has fled moments before Lady Caplet enters Juliet's room. Um, so her mother says, But now I'll tell thee joyful tidings. Girl, marry my child. Early next Thursday morn, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. So... She's telling her, you're going to get married on Thursday to Paris. Juliet says, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. So she's like, that's not going to make me happy. Um, she says, here comes your father. Tell him so yourself. So he comes in. How now, my wife? Have you delivered to her out our decree? So have you told her what we want? I, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. So she's saying, I'd rather... Juliet saying, I told her, but she'd rather die than marry this guy. So her father says, but fettle your fine joints against Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on a hurdle thither. Ouch, you green sickness carrying out, you baggage. Okay, so he's really angry. He says, you're going to do this or else. The mom says, fie, fie, what? Are you mad? So she's saying, okay, you need to calm down a little bit. Julie says, Good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but to speak a word. So she's like, Oh, please, Daddy, don't make me marry this guy. And um, he's like, Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to church, O Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me. My fingers itch. So... Um, he's saying, you don't, if you don't do this, you're not my kid anymore, basically. Julie says, oh, sweet, my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Mom says, talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Do as thou wilt, for I have done with thee. So she's not going to get involved. She's not going to help her. Okay. So, um, what are the joyful tidings? Okay that Lady Caplet brings to Juliet. So they're not joyful tidings to Juliet, right? They're sad tidings because she's saying the tidings are that you're going to marry Paris. Is there evidence here that the Caplet's attitude about Juliet's marriage to Paris has changed? Um, well, yes, because before he was like, well, it's up to her if she wants to marry you. But now the Capulets are, especially her father, is like, you will marry him or else you're out of here. Three, when Caplet says, my fingers itch, what does he mean? Okay, so I was thinking maybe one of two things. So, my fingers itch, it's like, maybe he's really mad. Or, he's just saying, I've had enough of you, and do what I say. So, I would check with Mrs. Chang, or Sapinera, or Montemayor on that one. I'm not 100%. Okay, I'm just kind of reading it, and gathering Okay, what I think. Okay, four. How could this document be used to place blame on Capulet, on Lady Capulet? So, in my opinion, the Capulet, the dad is, like, really mean, and he's not listening to his daughter, and he's willing to throw her away like garbage if she doesn't do what he says. And then Lady Capulet um, doesn't have her daughter's back at all. 
she's just like, do what your dad says. I'm not getting involved. It's your problem. So that could lead Juliet to feeling like all by herself with no choices. Um, that could lead her um, to killing herself because um, she doesn't have the support of her family. If, you know, things didn't go right with Romeo, then what does she have to live for? Okay, so we have, um, let's go ahead and do document E, too, okay? Um, so we have, after he kills Tybalt in Act 3, Romeo is banished to Mantu and seeks news of Juliet from his servant, Balthasar. Um, Capel's, mon Capel's Monument refers to the Caplet's family tomb, okay? So, Romeo says, how fair is my Juliet? So, how's Juliet? Balthasar says, her body sleeps in Capel's Monument, and her mortal parts with the angel lips. So, he tells Romeo she's died. Romeo says, is it even so that I defy you stars? So, he's, he's, um, you know, saying, God, why did you take her? Friar John is unable to deliver the letter informing Romeo that Juliet is not actually dead. Friar Lawrence says, Who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again. Unhappy fortune my, by my brotherhood. The letter was not nice but full of charge of dear import and the neglecting it may do much danger. So the fact that Romeo did not receive the message of the plan uh, for Juliet to take the sleeping potion um, it's going to lead to bad things, okay? So Friar Lawrence has entered the capitalist's tomb in order to take Juliet away. He says, Romeo, O pale, who else? What? Paris too? And sleepeth in blood? Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lam lamentable chance the lady stirs. O oh, comfortable friar, where is my lord? A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Okay, so let's look at our questions. When Romeo asks how Juliet is in Act 5, Scene 1, what does Romeo's servant, um, Balvisar, tell him? So he tells him that Juliet's died. Um, two, when Romeo gets this incorrect information from his servant, who or what does he seem to blame? Um, I think the stars might represent God or fate, okay? Um, in 5.2, what are the important contents of the letter that Friar John wasn't able to deliver Romeo? So the important, um, content is the plan. So the plan was that Juliet would fake her death by taking the sleeping potion, Okay. Uh, what does Friar Lawrence exclaim when he hears that the letter was not delivered? So he's like, oh no, you know, this is not going to go well. Um, the letter was very important. Now Romeo is going to think she's dead. It's not good. In 5.3, how does Friar Lawrence answer Juliet's question of where Romeo is? So, um, let me read it again. I wasn't paying attention. How does Friar Lawrence answer Juliet's question of where Romeo is. Put his answer into your own words. Okay, so we'll have to go back and look at that. Six, how can this document be used to answer the question, who is to blame? So, you could say part of who's to blame could be Balthasar. I mean, if he hadn't ran off and told Romeo, Romeo wouldn't have found out right away and then he would have realized, he would have gotten the message, and then it wouldn't have gone um, badly. You could blame um, the messenger, because the messenger stopped to help the sick child and didn't do his job of um, bringing the message to Romeo. You could blame Romeo for acting so quickly and... Um, um, ending his life, and then you could also, again, blame Friar Lawrence, because it was his plan, okay? Let's, uh, it, when it says, how does Friar Lawrence answer Julie's question of where is Romeo, let's go back and look at the document, okay? So, um, it says, 
at the bottom here. Friar Lawrence has entered the Capulet's tomb in order to take Juliet away. So Friar Lawrence says, um, Romeo, old pale, who else? What? Paris, too? So they're, um, they're both dead, okay? And steeped in blood. Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. Okay, so they die as the lady awakes, Juliet. Oh, comfortable fire, where is my lord? Okay, and then this is what you're supposed to put in your own words. A greater power than we can contradict has thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Okay, so a greater power, fate, or God has gone against us and taken uh, or, and ruined our plan. Um and taking Romeo away. Okay? So that's for number five. Okay? So, this is the bucketing, getting ready to write. Okay? So it says, look over all the documents and organize them into your final bucket. Buckets. Write labels under each bucket and place the letters of the documents in the buckets where they belong. It is okay to put a document in more than one bucket. Remember, your buckets are going to become your body paragraph. So let's say I blame Friar Lawrence, okay? So what document supports the fact that he is to, to blame? You would put that letter into that bucket, okay? If I think maybe, um, let's see... The Capulet, the dad, Julie's dad is to blame, then I would put um, document C perhaps in there, okay? Where he's like saying it or else. You could put, a, or maybe the mom's to blame, that would be. So you get the point where you're trying to show evidence. So you put the character's name and then you put the documents that show evidence, okay? Um, and then this will, you're going to be working on this. I'll just go over it quickly and then I'll stop. But so a thesis is like your conclusion, okay? Or your, your opinion, I should say, not conclusion. So three things are to blame for Romeo and Juliet's death, okay? So these things can be people, they could be fate, they could be God. Um, so... Let's just say Friar Lawrence, um, Sir Capulet, and the messenger are to blame for Romeo and Juliet's death because, okay, that's just an example. And then you pull, so you have reasons or evidence in each bucket, and that's where you'll create your thesis statement, okay? So I'm going to stop there. Um, and I will get back to you guys. Do your work, please, and hang in there, and I hope to see you all soon. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can text, email, call me, okay? Take care. Bye.